in this pot is almost a thousand kilos of biryani. In India, cooking and eating biryani could be considered an extreme sport. But what's so good about the combination of rice, meat, and spices that drives thousands of people to eat biryani at crazy hours of the night, or even fight for a table? In this ultimate biryani tour of Bengaluru, we're going to three places where you'll find totally different styles of biryani. They have a forklift for the biryani. I honestly had no idea what I was getting into. Wow, that's a massive pot. It literally is jacuzzi size. The magnitude, the size of this pot. All oh, the flavors keep on building. Mm. Mm. Does the biryani live up to its hype? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's 3 a.m. We're on our way to go eat biryani. Hey everyone, good morning. Hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Weens. We are beginning bright and early. Well, it's not even bright and early. It's dark and early this morning. It's 4 a.m. Kripal, good morning. Hey, good morning, Mark. Welcome to the early morning Hoskote biryani tradition. Oh, people are actually arriving and lining up. There's still like two hours before they open. Good morning, good morning. good morning. Nice to meet you. It was his father who began the tradition of the Hoskote biryani in 1992. Correct? Uh, yes, yes. 1992, okay. Yes. So that's 32 years ago. Yes. That's when the story began. And his father began with very, with a very humble, uh, small sort of a quantity. I think Avaga is to two kilos. Yes. They would do about two kilos. And today on a Sunday, Around 900 kilos of mutton. Around 900 kilos. 900 kilos. So the journey that began with two kilos of meat 32 years ago, today on a Sunday, culminates in about 900 kilos of meat being used. And I heard like 10,000 plates of biryani. Yes, I don't know. I don't know if they'll tell you exactly how many plates. But yes, let's. it's safe to say that the biryanis here are sold in the thousands, especially on a Sunday. <laughs> wow. Check out the size of this pot. Oh, that's a raging hot fire. That's huge. All burning over wood fire. At this stage, the meat, which I believe is mutton or sheep meat, it is boiling, simmering away, probably with some spices that have been tempered down because you can smell that in the steam and the aroma. Uh, but they're getting ready to add more ingredients, more spices. They're gonna add the rice, uh, and we're gonna see that process as they steam, as they bake, as they dumb. It's called the dumb process, where they seal it all together. To ward off the evil eye. Oh, okay. Yes. Now that's a ritual. He's squishing some limes in front of the biryani pots. It's a tradition and respecting their biryani. Wow, that's a massive pot. It literally is jacuzzi sized. Today they're preparing 250 kilos of mutton. Yeah, we got here at the stage where they've already tempered down the spices in the oil, but you can smell out, yeah, the masalas are in there already. It's been boiling, simmering away with water, with the mutton tenderizing. Now they're about to add more ingredients, the tomatoes and the rice. Literally, I've seen jacuzzis that are smaller than this biryani. Spice mixture of masala paste goes in. So basically about six ingredients or seven ingredients that they mix at home. Okay. So his father, see the father learned this recipe from their grandparents. So oh, okay, so it's a family, is, it's yeah. a family recipe. That's right. You so can have it, it's not a problem, but it'll be a little bit spicy. Oh, yeah, it is spicy. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that hits you in the morning. Oh, wake Woo. up call. The rice has been washed, rice goes in. Oh. 
from here, they're letting it gently simmer, letting all those ingredients absorb into the rice. It's a beautiful, beautiful sight and truly incredible. Just the magnitude, the size of this pot, this biryani is unbelievable. And now you can see, so it's starting to, the rice is now starting, beginning to absorb that liquid. So now the rice is rising to the surface. Okay, now that is the ghee that's going in. Oh, a whole bucket of ghee goes in. a lot of heat to the face, but they just all spring into action. The lid goes on. He starts piling the coals from the bottom to the top, and that's the dumb method. That's what's gonna seal it all together, keep it all sealed, plus coals on the top. And the coals are gonna make it cook from the top. The coals act to eliminate the condensation that happens on the top of the lid. What exactly is the history of the biryani in Hoskote, and why is it so early in the morning? So typically, Hoskote was a stop for truckers. And in the morning when they wake up and they want to go, let's say, drive out for 300, 400 kilometers, they want a nice, hearty meal. So that's when Mani began this whole concept of doing the biryani. And that became an instant hit with the truckers. So the earliest customers were the truckers and then also the factory workers from around here. We've got 5.12 on the clock. There's a line that's now reaching into the parking lot. Probably a hundred people are in line already. You woke up for the early uh, morning biryani. We just completed the shift and we came. Great. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you work at night time. Yeah. Amazing. So we can't express in words <laughs> okay. actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to meet Very you. Nice to meet you. Enjoy the biryani. What's really incredible and surprising is that it's not just truckers, it's people of all walks of life that you can see in the line. Friends hanging out, late night workers, two entire families here. Do you guys come here often? Yeah, yes, we man. come here often. What is the best part of the biryani? It's the mutton. The mutton oh, pieces. the mutton, the mutton yeah. pieces? The tender pieces. Yes. Very good. Oh. Oh, release a little bit of that pressure and see. Oh. Oh. The quality control passed. Now they're just jumping, springing into action. There it is. That's what everyone has been waiting for. He's got both the rice from both the biryanis together. Oh, and this is his ritual. Now he has a tradition. It's a ritual, a ceremony, kind of a blessing, but kind of a spiritual ritual that he does with the biryani. The, the celebration of biryani has begun. This mountain, jacuzzi of biryani. They're scooping out now. You can see they've laid out all of the to-go uh, bowls for, for takeaway, but then they also serve it on a leaf plate uh, to eat here. The aromas coming out of this pot are unbelievable. Quite an impressive uh, control system here, a queuing system. That's right. It's very organized, actually. Very organized. So you line up. You, you go around up. like, it's almost like an immigration, That's right. immigration so queue. You buy your token there. You pay your money and then you come here with a token and this is where you get rewarded with a biryani. Biryani pot is here, fresh servings, people just roll in. The first people have been served this morning. It's time, the moment we've been waiting for. So rice first? Rice first. Just to get a, 
it's like dipping your feet into the pool to test the waters. That's right. Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, the flavors keep on building. Yeah. Even with that first bite. It's like when it hits your tongue, it starts off good. But as you keep on chewing and letting those each individual grain of rice settle on your tongue, the spices just emerge. Oh, that's rich and moist and oily. And again, they are very generous with the mutton. Looks like we've got a whole bone here with marrow on oh, the inside. Oh, that's a nali. Um, the nali nuggets, tender test. Oh, oh yes. Oh, it's, it's finger tender. <laughs> My finger actually went through it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mmm. Oh. All that meat. That salty savoriness of that meat. Mm. Mark. And it's braised mm. in that liquid until it has that, that really extreme tenderness. Yeah, it's not melting. It still retains that muscle it has naturalness a, of it. Yeah, it has a bit of a and bite. The tendon. Yeah. Also the smokiness that's coming through on the outer surface of the meat. Oh yeah. And on the inside the gelatinous mm -hmm. softness, mm -hmm. juiciness. Cooking in quantity is not easy. And sometimes when you cook in quantity, you sacrifice the quality. Yeah. But here, like you can be guaranteed they've been making that same recipe in a small pot for the gigantic jacuzzi sized biryani pot and have not sacrificed the flavor, the quality. You got the onion and lime? I love red onions as well. You kind of mix that into the, the biryani a little bit. Mm. Oh, that complements it well as well. Yeah. Going for a little bit of the raita, especially with that, that cucumber onion mixture. Yeah. And then again, you can, you can work that in, massage it into their, your plate of biryani. Well, the raita gives it a totally different dimension. Again, that like dairy cooling, it's cooling. That's right. I think it's a piece of the kidney. I got a liver. You got a liver. Yes. So that's the other thing. So you, you get a surprise nugget in every biryani. Yeah? Something, that's, all the organs are used as well. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. The chicken kebab. That's right. Most of them are wings, it looks like, coated in a masala. And this is fried, I believe, too. Okay. It's not the star of the show. Yeah. But it is an accompaniment and it gives you a different flavor, a flavor of chicken. Mm. I mean, in case you want more meat, to be mm -hmm. honest, in my opinion, you come here and just do the mutton biryani. Yeah, yeah. You know. Don't distract yourself. In, in any other restaurant, yeah. that would be outstanding. Yeah. But when we're faced with a plate of mutton biryani from Mani, like the chicken gets shoved aside. <laughs> We have kind of, looks like the leg, maybe the That's part, a shank. A portion of the shank. Yes. Whoa, like totally dense with spice and rice. Mm. Flavor is great though. And then the meat around the outside. It's so tender. Yeah, it does. Look at that, leaving the, revealing the bare bone on the bottom. Full verification full justification why people wake up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. to come eat this biryani. Now Joel and Prakash are over here enjoying the biryani. How's the biryani, guys? Joel, how is that biryani? I'm alternating between speechlessness and then just like all words related to softness, jiggly meats, delicious, fatty bites. They're just flowing out. As you can see, I'm sweating because <laughs> this biryani is uh, I think one of the spiciest biryanis I've ever had but I still can't stop eating it. How is the biryani guys? It's good. Awesome. <laughs> so I kid you not, I came outside to wash my hands after eating that biryani 
and I literally forgot it was morning. I was just lost in my thoughts. That's one of the better plates of biryani I've ever had. Absolutely incredible flavors. We've had a massive plate of biryani, and it's just now 7 a.m. But we have more to eat today, so we are driving back to Bengaluru for the next place. We made it back to the center of Bengaluru, and this is where we're gonna find our next biryani on this tour. But this is quite an intersection here. The colors, the action, the energy. Uh, it's really, really a cool setting. Oh, hello. <laughs> we are at a place called Taj Hotel. Now this is a biryani that goes back decades. In fact, this eatery goes back 90 years. Wow. And they do a very special biryani, which is called a Bengaluru. Shadi ki biryani. This is a biryani which is usually celebrated over a wedding feast. Ah, okay. And the good okay. thing for us, we don't have to wait for weddings. Hi, Hi. It's very what nice to pleasure. meet you. What a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. We're jumping straight to the kitchen to see some of the process and already the chefs are at full force. There's like five different pots going over fire. They're gonna get started now on what is their most famous dish, the mutton biryani. So onions have been tempering down in oil, caramelizing now, ginger garlic paste goes in, red chili powder, a whole plate full. Oh, mutton. The lamb that's going in. Basically, oh. a combination of some chopped mint, Adrak. mint, Namak. and the coriander. Mint, coriander. Mint, coriander. There's some salt also oh. there. Salt. And is that ginger goes it's in? That ginger paste. Oh man, what a combination! Yeah. Curd. Yeah. Curd is going in. Chopped tomatoes go in. That's right. As with all biryanis, it's truly an art. It's a process, it's a strategy. Everything is strategic. And so after searing off that meat, then he pours water in, that's gonna boil, that's gonna simmer until the meat is ultra tender uh, before the rice, probably some other ingredients go in as well. One of the most challenging tasks of a wood fire is regulating the temperature. Oh that's yeah. That's what he's doing now. He's trying to reduce the heat. So he wants the meat to simmer, not to boil too much in that stock. Something interesting for the preparation is that the rice is gonna be first pre-boiled separately before it's then combined with the meat to cook and seal in all the juices and all the flavors. Okay, so the rice is half cooked now. It's half cooked. He's gonna scoop that rice out. That is boiling, boiling hot. And then he's gonna put it into the meat. I don't even know how he can reach that far into the pot. That's incredible skills. Timing is very important, right? Yes. That's incredibly hard work. The rice that comes out towards the end is the one that's cooked the most. Okay. And therefore, that's the one that stays on top. Oh, and okay. doesn't need to cook as much. So oh, the rice right. that came out first is at the bottom. Oh, okay. So it'll cook. So you will see that. Now, you'll introduce it once again to the biryani handies. <laughs> Oh, saffron with milk. Yeah, saffron. That's so the saffron has the dissolved into the milk. Okay. Yeah. So now the the dumb style where it's going to be sealed, sealing in everything. A cloth goes around the outside. And now he's scooping in those coals, actually putting it on the sides of the pot as well, scooping it around. 
distributing it around the pot. And I think some will go on the cover on the top as well. What a process, unbelievable. So that biryani is laid to rest. It's gonna mingle with itself, cook and steam and bake and roast um, all together until we reveal the biryani. Fluffy that rice is. Oh, and the ghee. Oh, oh wow. So the biryani is ready. Just that rice, the luxuriousness of that rice, that texture, that blend, that swirl of colors, the aromas, and the meat is still nestled below. Such a cool process. And just the art, the craft, the strategy that goes into it, incredible. Oh, there's the meat revealing itself. Yes. Just a bite right out of the pot. This is as fresh as it gets. Oh yeah. This is gonna be hot, Mark. It's, it's worth it to sacrifice your fingers. Yes. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. Mm. That melts in your mouth. Oh, it has this incredible gingery cardamomy, like richness to it, but the ghee a rich and you got the lushness of the ghee. Yes, and then some way that sweet, gentle mm. sourness of the tomato mm. too cuts that right away. And maybe the curd as well. Mm. Bone tender. Ooh. Ah, that's oh, hot. Look at that! Look at that! Pure, meaty deliciousness. It really tastes pure. That's right. Yeah. There's Ultra tender. Absolutely. Mm. I think this is a biryani yeah. that we'll have a lot of fun with on the table. I, uh, I believe so. You want to spend some time with it. Like in India, <laughs> in, out here we say fursat me, meaning at leisure. So let's right. move to the table. Let's move to the table. Huge pieces of mutton, tender, falling oh. apart mutton. That, oh, that moist rice. The tomatoes and onions in there. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so some of that, uh. that eggplant, eggplant sauce on the Egg. side there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. wow. The flavors have started to mingle together now. The flavors, the length of the flavor has certainly deepened. Yes. Mm. The meatiness, but the pureness, the cleanness. Mm. Okay, me moving into the meat. Oh, oh, you can tell it's gonna, it's falling off the bone. Still hot and tender. It just pulls apart. Mm. Oh. Mm. That lamb, it's so good and so tender and so fresh. Mm. You know what's interesting about tasting the meat in this biryani is that you can taste the true essence of the flavor of the lamb. Mm -hmm. It's not masked mm. by too much of the garam masala. There is no garam masala in this biryani. Yeah, it's not strong on the spices. That's right. This is a biryani that allows you to appreciate the character of the animal. Yes. In terms of its flavor. Yes. Bagan ka khatta. Oh. A bagan is, uh, is eggplant. Egg okay, brinjal is eggplant. eggplant. Okay. So the eggplant and just that gravy. Mmm. Mmm. Not only eggplant, but tomatoes in there. That's right. Can you also taste oh. a bit of the coriander? Oh, yeah. The 
the coriander seeds, some of that spicing that the comes through. The tartness of it. The tartness of it. Oh, and it has a bit of a chili kick to it as well. That's right. Oh, that is, I mean, it just gives a totally different dimension to the biryani. Uh, eggplant curry is just blowing my taste buds now. That added tartness. Okay, so next up we'll try the ash gourd. This is called the dalcha mak. Dalcha. Oh, ah. so there's dal melted into it. That's right, into lentils. Wow. Lentils. That is the base of that. So again, you can, you can see the ash gourd in here. You can see the tomatoes in here. And again, you just kind of like work that into your, your rice, massage it, giving it even more body. Mm. Mm. Much more gentler, mm -hmm. creamier. Oh, a little richness, the starchiness of the, the dal in there. Oh man. The lentils also, there's a bit of garlic that goes into this. Yes. And what Saad was telling me was that typically when they make this dalcha at home, there's also some mutton bones, the stock that goes uh, into flavor this dal. Okay, it's not lacking in flavor. Absolutely. Absolutely flavor packed. Phenomenal. Another absolutely phenomenal biryani, but completely different. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That was incredible. Pleasure. Incredible. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see Thank you. you very much. Oh, that was outstanding. Okay, we're moving on. We still have another biryani. So we're at Shivaji Military Hotel here in Banashankri, South Bengaluru. This by far is perhaps one of Bengaluru's most popular and also perhaps one of the oldest biryanis that continues to be served over the last 90 years. I think we have arrived. So this is the dining room at Shivaji. It is intense. So many people, everyone's here to eat the biryani. Definitely, a, if you didn't know what you were doing, you would be a little bit intimidated. But literally, people, people sitting, eating, people are waiting in line to sit down to eat, to get a taste of the food here. And yet it's all, all in the good-natured friendliness. Mr. Raji, very nice to meet you. Third generation behind Shivaji Military Hotel. Wow. It's him and his brother Lokesh who run the show here. Wow. Everything, every single pot of biryani is tended to personally by Rajiv or his brother Lokesh. The masala, the spice mix is ground by them at home, by the family at home, and that's what gets deployed here. Oh, are we going on the forklift? That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Another huge pot of biryani. Wow. Oh, wow, this kitchen, there's barely any space in this kitchen. It's a small kitchen, but they have a forklift for the biryani. Oh, this is one of the coolest kitchen moves I've ever seen. No, he's going up, he's going up, and that's gonna be lifted up. A little bit of elevation. This is a finished pot of the biryani. It's chicken biryani, the donde biryani, which is served in these banana leaf or plantain leaf bowls. and. This biryani, again, it's totally different. The aroma coming out of this rice, this has a very nice yellow-green color. There's some green masala herbs in there. And then the other thing that I really smell are the bay leaves. The bay leaves in there just coming out so nicely. You see hints or accents of tomato or chili in there. It's so incredibly aromatic. This kitchen is unbelievable. This is the reason I was not gonna leave Bengaluru without coming here. You wouldn't expect it any other way, but the kitchen is just as insane as the dining room. Finally found a table here in the corner. Actually, things are starting to sort of calm down a little bit, but this place, they have literally taken dining to the extreme. This is extreme dining. It's almost a sport to eat here. That's right, that's the right word. <laughs> it's a sport. Survival of the fittest. Yes. 
We're also joined by Dr. Anand, and he's going to be joining us for this meal, for this amazing meal. Thank you. I'm going to nestle some of this out of the, the doné into the plate. Oh, you can feel the freshness of it. That rice, the aromatics coming out. Oh, and when you get some of it out onto your main plate, you can ju it just opens up the aromatics. Spill some of it out. And if I've learned one thing, you've got to ease into the rice first. Rice first, meat comes after. Let's stay on it. Dona biryani. Dona biryani. Oh, again, the flavor is starting to build. The complexity of the spices. The pepper, the green chilies, the aromatics. That's right. Oh, man. Thank you. See, this is the reason why people wait here, Mark. They go through all this, but when they wait and they tuck into that doné biryani, that's what happens to them. And they're like... like all is forgiven. Totally washed away. Mm. All, yes. Everything makes sense when you finally sit down to eat. Okay. How is that? <laughs> that meat looks so tender. Right in the mouth. Oh. Can taste the tender down fat. Oh. Never oh mind, the taste of the rice is just awesome. Nice. Okay, I've moved into the mutton now. And again, oh, there's some little riblets. Again, look, look at that mutton, it's just finger tender. Oh, wow. Oh, it's absorbed all of that flavor. The ginger, all those spices are embedded within that meat all the way to the bone. It goes all the way to the bone. What is this sauce exactly? So this is basically something called cherwa. So it's a combination of various greens that go in. There's some mint, there's some coriander, plenty of chili that goes in, ah. onions. Oh. So it's basically a fortified sort of a gravy, just in case you want to give your biryani a little extra kick. Oh, you just see it's melting onions in there. Oh man, green chilies, pepper. Oh, that re rehydrates, totally rejuices and rehydrates your rice. Wow. If you thought your biryani could not get more flavorful, think again. Oh, that sauce. Yeah, the minty freshness with the caramelized onions that melt in your mouth. The pepper. The pepper just, it's just embedded through and through. The spice starts building. This is the mutton fry. Oh, oh. I didn't think it was gonna be that tender. I should have known better. That was terrible to think it wasn't going to be tender. Look at that. Just leaves the bone completely barren. And you've got just that, again, finger, finger tender. That's right. Man. Can you feel that pepper hit? That yes. insane pepper hit. The black pepper coarsely ground. Mm. So it just unleashes on your tongue. Oh, you'll be licking every bone clean here. Yeah, the pepper is absolutely sensational. Okay, next, we should try the mutton keema. Okay. The mutton keema. Thank you. So the the mutton keema. The mutton But in keema. meatball, in the, meatball formation. They call it the keema unde, keema unde. has a nuttiness to it. That comes from the dried fenugreek that goes into it. Wow. That's just loaded with that flavor of nuttiness. That gravy is insane. Oh man. Again, it's like, you think the flavors could not get more complex and stronger, and they do with every bite. It just keeps building. It's one of the most exciting meatballs I've ever had in my life. We've got one more, one more meat dish on the on the table here. This is the black pepper chicken. Oh, yes. Oh, cascading down. Want some more? A waterfall of meat juice. Oh, wow. 
this one you tasting more the flavor of the coriander yes you know the dry spice it has this greenish this greenish masala flavor to it but again the pepper is just standing out and like magnified I can honestly say that was one of the best meals I've had in my life. Shivaji Military Hotel is still family run for over 90 years. And actually all three restaurants, their heritage, they're still family run. They serve unbelievable biryanis, unbelievable food. And it's the, the stories, the food, the people that are behind them that makes them so incredibly special. I'll have all the restaurants listed in the description box below that you can check out when you're in Bengaluru. And I wanna say a massive thank you to my friend Kripal from Food Lovers TV. And I wanna say a huge thank you to you for watching this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And remember to subscribe because we are traveling all the way around the state of Karnataka in South India, eating some of the best food. You're not gonna to wanna to miss any of it. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye from Bengaluru. I'll see you on the next video.